Hello, everyone. My name is Osman, and I'm a member of the Scalable Solvers Group. And today I will talk about fast algorithms for constructing surrogate models. The problem set up here is that we have some kind of expensive model that we're interested in. And this could, for example, be a PD model that you have to run on a supercomputer. And this model has some set of inputs that we represent with a vector theta. And we assume that these inputs are random in some sense, so that there's a, a random distribution over the values that they can take. These things could be stuff like load, dimensions, material properties, and so on. For the sake of this example, suppose we have a model simulating a bridge. And suppose that maybe we're interested in some quantity about this bridge. So maybe, for example, what is the maximum deformation of the bridge under a variety of conditions like different loads, different uh, winds, different material properties, and so on. And as I said earlier, those inputs are assumed to be random, to have some distribution assigned to them. So uh, consequentially, we're interested in to then understand what is the distribution of the max deformation in this case. Or a simple question would be to ask, you know, what is the mean and the standard deviation of the maximum deformation that this bridge is going to experience, given the distributions that we have on the input variables? So how can we solve this problem to understand this? Um, one approach that we might try, if you're a little bit more mathematically inclined, is to say, you know, can we solve this analytically? Can we figure out the distribution of this output deformation analytically? And this is typically not possible. And the reason is quite simply that the model is expensive, it's complicated, and we can't do it analytically for that reason. If you're a more of a computational person, maybe you want to do a, a bunch of simulations and then compute the, the statistics like mean and standard deviation that we care about. And that's something we can try. But we're assuming that this is not a good idea because we have a model that, that is really expensive. So we, we want to really avoid running the model many times. To understand this a little bit further, here is sort of what the, what the problem is. So we have our, our sort of uh, model, we have our inputs, we have the simulation output, and we want to compute some statistics of some quantity of interest. And to do this reliably, we would need to run the simulations many times, okay? And that's prohibitive for an expensive model. So what we can do instead is to leverage a surrogate model. And the way this works is that we still run our expensive model, but we only run it a few times. Then we look at the outputs that we get from those few runs and use them to construct a surrogate model. This surrogate model is then used in place of the expensive model to compute many simulations and then base our uh, estimates for the statistics that we care about on those uh, simulation runs. At this point, you might wonder, you know, what is a surrogate model? It sounds a little bit like a magical thing that we can use to, instead of an expensive model, but still get high quality outputs. Okay, so I will now explain a little bit what, what one of these surrogate models might look like. And there's, there's many forms a surrogate model could take. These days, it's popular to use neural networks and machine learning techniques, for example. In this particular work, we consider something uh, maybe a little bit more traditional in the form of a polynomial model. So we suppose that the surrogate model, which takes a th an input theta, remember, it takes the form of a linear combination of polynomials. So phi i here is a polynomial, and we have a family of polynomials. And in particular, these polynomials are assumed to be products of univariate polynomials. And these univariate polynomials could be something like uh, Legendre polynomials, Laguerre polynomials, or another similar basis that is, is you know, suitable for the problem that you're considering. And the CIs are then coefficients that determine how much of, of each of these polynomials we use in the model. So once we've decided on a, a family of polynomials, the problem becomes one of determining the coefficients. And this is a linear least square problem, as it turns out, where the design matrix A comes from evaluating the polynomials at various points. And then CI, the vector uh, containing the CIs, is the one we're trying to solve for. When we set up this problem, we need to also know the right-hand side vector, which is here um, highlighted on the right side. 
And the sort of problem that we're going to run into here is that each entry in this right-hand side vector requires an expensive model evaluation, which is what we wanted to avoid. So how can we sort of circumvent this problem of having uh, to evaluate the expensive model many times? So we can sort of take a trick out of the hat from the field of numerical, randomized numerical linear algebra, which is to look at our big uh, least square problem and then sample a subset of the equations uh, randomly, uh, which gives us a smaller least square problem to solve. So not only does this require fewer flops to solve, but we also now have a shorter right-hand side vector, which means fewer expensive model evaluations. So the contribution that we make in our paper is coming up with a very efficient way of doing this random sampling for a wide range of polynomial families F that are used in practice in function approximation when the polynomials are univariate polynomials, or, or they're, they're a product of univariate polynomials. I don't have time to go into the details, unfortunately, which are very fascinating. But I want to give you some idea of how this sampling works, OK? So again, this here is the design matrix that we have in the least square problem, the, the big original least square problem. And as I said previously, this is assumed to be a product of univariate polynomials. So that's what we see here. Now. For each of those univariate polynomials, we can also form matrices, but they're a lot smaller than the big uh, matrix that we see at the a little bit further up. Okay, so this these are the quantities that we're playing with here. So the first step in the algorithm is to uniformly at random draw a column or a column index from the big matrix. Okay, that's step one. Once we've done that, we can compute what that corresponds to in terms of uh, a column for each of the smaller matrices. So this is straightforward to do. Then what we do is for we, we look at these each of those columns in those smaller matrices and view them. Uh, we can derive appropriate probability distributions from each of those columns. And from those probability distributions, we can sample rows. So that's the green lines here are meant to represent the particular rows that we end up sampling. Then for each of those row indices, we can compute a corresponding row index in the original big matrix, and that row is then our sample. Okay, so this is kind of uh, kind of the overall idea. Then we repeat this process many times to get all the samples, and by doing this process, it end up, ends up being a lot cheaper than if you were to uh, do a more standard approach. Okay, so that's the, that's sort of the high level idea. This is the end of my talk. I want to highlight the wonderful collaborators I had on this project um, here on this slide. And if you would like to see more information, I encourage you to take a look at our uh, preprint, which is the, the top bullet point there. I also want to sort of um, advertise something else, which is a monograph where I made a contribution. Uh, and this monograph is about randomized numerical linear algebra broadly, especially with a software emphasis. So it's uh, sort of very up to date and has covers a lot of interesting topics. So if you're interested in that area in general, I would encourage you to take a look. And if you're interested in these so-called structured sketching or structured randomized numerical linear algebra problems that I mentioned a little bit about here today, I would encourage you to specifically look at section seven in that monograph. So if you have any questions, I'm happy to take them in the Q&A session uh, or also on email if you'd like to do that. Thank you so much for your attention.